Welcome to Streaming Media West. It's a beautiful day outside. I hope all of us here get a chance to check out the beach. I know there is lunch afterwards, so I'm not going to take a lot of time. And I hope my talk is somewhere near how good the lunch is going to be. So <laughs> I'll, I'll try to keep it short, and then we'll have a good discussion around. Cool. So uh, I'm Amit from Facebook Engineering. I work on videos, and I like videos. I like coffee, too. I've had enough coffee, but I'm going to talk about videos now. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, let's do a quick uh, show of hands. How many of you have heard about this thing called live videos on Facebook? Cool. Awesome. There's like 75%, give or take. For the rest 25%, please, please meet us after this talk, and we'd love to talk, talk more. Uh, this is my son. He's, he's three years old now. Uh, he started to count. So he knows four is bigger than uh, two, three is greater than one. And one of the things I realized recently is while going live with my family back in India, he gets super excited as the number of people, as the number of viewers increase. So he gets excited when there are two people, like my brother and then uh, my sister. And if there are four, he's like ecstatic that that's audience for him. Uh, so the core point here with our Facebook Live, with what me and my friends, my colleagues work towards, is can we build a platform where we could experience moments together, which we think is very, very powerful and much needed in this. Uh, world right now. Uh, a lot of magic happens uh, when we take a phone. If you have to take a phone, press a couple of buttons and start streaming across the globe. A uh, lot of cool technology happens underneath, and we are going to talk about some of it and some of the decisions we make, some of the trade-offs we uh, uh, discuss while we start building this, uh, in, start building this platform for, for streaming live videos. Right? So over the next 15 minutes or so, uh, we are going to talk about briefly about Facebook Live architecture. Uh, spend some amount of time thinking about live encoding and what are the considerations there. And the best part at the end is we have this awesome Facebook team here around in this room. Uh, please meet us after this uh, in this very room. Ask us all the questions you want to ask. Get to know us. Get to know what we do. There are different people from different parts of uh, uh, Facebook engineering um, and product here uh, to help you answer any questions. Yeah. Cool. So let's get started. Uh, in the keynote today, Nick did a great job of talking about how Facebook Live generally works, the overall architecture, and he went uh, in depth about this product called Live With. So to quickly zoom through, so there are three major components of, uh, in Facebook Live architecture. One is the capture, where people can take videos through devices or through Live API. Right? On device, we transcode on the device and send an RTMP stream to our Facebook backend infrastructure. That's the, that's the second part. Uh, the backend infrastructure, where we do a bunch of things. And one of the core things we do is to encode a video into different formats. Uh, and the reason we do that is because we have different clients at different bandwidths. And how do we support uh, playing uh, supporting all of them together? And of course, the third part is consumption, where the, uh, the data or the streams is sent through uh, the CDN across all the devices we support. So the key takeaway here is there are three, three big components, the capture, uh, processing, and consumption. Right? Uh, for, the, for this part of the talk, for the next 10, 12 minutes, we are going to talk about the center part, which is video encoding server. Uh, and what does it do? What are certain trade-offs? And uh, what are some fun learnings uh, in terms of encoding? What we believe for, for a great live experience, there are four key pillars. Right? First, of course, is quality. Uh, we strive for high visual quality. Right now, we measure visual quality through a variant of SSIM, which is a pretty fairly well-known metric. Uh, how, do we how do we make sure that the fidelity of the video is really, really high? Second is stalls. Let's face it, none of us like stalls. Like, show of hands, if anybody here likes to see a video that stalls? Probably no one. Uh, so what can we do on the video encoding side to make sure there are minimum, as minimum stalls as possible? Uh, third, of course, is latency. Like, the end-to-end -end latency for live matters a lot. And that matters a lot to make sure that we experience those authentic moments together. It is no fun when somebody makes a comment, and then the uh, broadcaster hears after such a long time. Or, or the broadcaster makes a comment, and the viewers hear after a long time. So latency matters quite a bit. And finally is devices. As Facebook, many, many, many people use us, uh, are on the platform, are on different devices, different versions of operating systems. So how do we create encodings that work in ma vast majority of the cases? So these four things, quality, stalls, latency, and devices, are certain considerations we do while uh, uh, thinking about video encoding. So under these four pillars, we start to think about what codecs do we use, uh, what formats, and what are certain things we do in pre- and post-processing. Right? So let's talk about both of them. Uh, in terms of codecs and formats, we currently do H.264 for video, for the most part. Uh, we do AAC for audio. 
uh, we do adaptive bitrate encodings in terms of making sure we adapt to different bandwidth conditions. And we do one to two second uh, GOP sizes for live. Uh, one fun thing about Facebook is we do a constant experimentation. Uh, there are lots of experiments running at any given time to start to optimize for each of these parameters. Uh, our infrastructure team does an amazing job to build this uh, experimentation framework where we can easily launch experiments at scale. Some of these folks are right here in this room. So again, I would encourage people to talk to, uh, talk to us about how we do it, what are the certain trade-offs we look at. Uh, coming, coming back to this, so once we know what codec we want to use, H.264 is primarily because a lot of hardware devices, uh, hardware decode supports it right now. Uh, what codecs we want to use, what streaming formats we choose, and what GOPs we do. The core question remains is, how do we encode all of this at scale? Like, what are the right encoding settings to pick for a given codec? Uh, and what are the related trade-offs? Right? So when we first started, uh, the, we, our, our initial approach was to use a static encoding setting, uh, which was equivalent to FFmpeg's uh, preset medium. Uh, preset. FFmpeg is a great piece of software, and the amount, like, what we got here was a great win in terms of getting something started, started right away. Uh, this worked great in terms of most of our streams looked great quality. Uh, the CPU load was very predictable. The latency was well, uh, well within the bounds which we wanted to uh, for an initial launch. Right? After digging deeper, we realized that there were certain kinds of content that did not compress well with a very generic approach. Then the natural engineer in some of us started to think about, can we optimize this? Uh, can we tune it better? What, what would live encodings look like if you spend more time that, rather than a static encoding option? Right? This is where we went back to some of our non-live or VOD routes. Uh, a couple of years ago, we started looking into per-content-based video encoding uh, for VOD. So there is a scale 2016 uh, video at scale talk where we talk about AI-based encoding. Uh, in non-live cases, we try to understand the content and pick the right encoding setting for each content. So can we apply, so the question came is, can we apply some of those learnings for live video encoding? Right? Uh, thinking back, many people in this room might know, uh, different videos encode better with different encoding settings. Uh, like a sports content encodes differently than a movie scene versus an animation scene. Uh, so this was, uh, this was our learning from the VOD side of things uh, and also fairly uh, industry knowledge in terms of how uh, compression usually works. Second thing was modern encoders right now has dozens of options. Like this is just a sample screenshot from uh, X264 or VP9 or HM encoders. And each of them can be tuned to get slightly different output. So how can we combine, so the core question remains, how can we combine the, uh, the, the fact that different videos compress better with different options and having encoders having dozens of knobs uh, to tune output, right? So, the core mission quickly became, can we take every video and then encode it with every possible option and pick the best? Uh, best here could be smallest file size or small file size at a given quality. Uh, and this was, in, in some approach, this was the first iteration. Like, can we even start thinking in this direction? But as you can imagine, there was a small problem. There are thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of options and there are multiple video streams that come to Facebook. So this was not practical. Uh, so what that meant was we had to operate under certain constraints, right? For live resources, for example, CPU, we just could not afford to take a video and then encode in every possible option uh, right now. And second is, of course, latency. Some of those options are expensive. Some of them are cheap. Some of them, uh, so we do not want to make sure we increase uh, latency for any of our live streams. So taking a step back and thinking about it, uh, we started framing the problem, can we pick the right encoding settings within the given bounds of CPU and or uh, resource and, and latency constraints? Right? So our first approach, uh, one of the observations we had, as uh, we saw earlier today, and uh, what Nick mentioned about it in our keynote, is there are two different ways how people do live on Facebook. There is through devices or through phones. Uh, and second is live streams, the live API streams. And what we realized is there is slight difference in this content. Uh, APIs are mostly through uh, professional or semi-professional setup where people have uh, in a different setting what the live streams happen uh, and through phone and through other devices are mostly through people taking their phones, uh, starting live in, in outdoor settings or in um, settings with their friends and family. Um, so the question came up is can we optimize rather than every stream as a first step, can we optimize at a category of videos? Um, like many things at Facebook, we decided to try it out. 
So uh, we, we took a bunch of live encoded uh, live streams from Live API, to be precise, 5,000 plus video clips, and ran them through hundreds of video encoding options. So that created about a million, a millions of video encodes for, for that particular sub subset. Right? Uh, we wanted to compare the baseline encode, the FFmpeg preset medium that we talked about earlier, to all these millions of options to figure out smallest file size at same or higher SSIM, which is our version of quality. Right? So some options naturally started to bubble up, like, hey, these options were better than the static options for the, these categories of videos. But of course, we wanted to eliminate a few based on latency, uh, uh, encoding latency and CPU usage. So out of the things that bubbled up, we removed a few that said, yeah, this does not meet our encoding and uh, latency constraints. Um, of course, guarding against outliers, where there were certain uh, options that overall and average SSIM would look great, but certain parts of the video would not compress well. So we had to guard against them. And finally, as in many things, trust but verify, we had to spot check a few videos, because there is no better measurement than just watching videos. Uh, so we spot checked a few of them. Some of them looked great, some of them did not. Uh, so after this five point uh, check, uh, we came up with a few options that looked much better than our previous one. So this is just a first iteration of what's uh, in the approach that we are thinking about for live encoding. Uh, but we see, in terms of results, very early, but we see double digit gains in terms of compression efficiency at same quality and same resource, uh, same resource usage. Uh, so this is still being optimized in terms of what more can we do here, but the directional results are very, very, very promising in this space. Right? Of course, the next steps here are, can we use similar approaches to op optimize other class of videos? Um, and can we go back, and the, the next step after that is, can we pick the right encoding setting for every video? Can we apply the full learnings from our uh, VOD pipeline to live? and make sure that data compresses well, video looks good, we have less stalls, and we continue to support a uh, lot of devices that uh, people watch videos on Facebook on. So this is about video encoding. Uh, the next thing is about what we do in terms of pre- and post-processing. So primarily, we take care of two things in this phase. One is handling bad inputs. Uh, the top issues we see is in a bunch of our uh, f uh, streaming from phones, is there is gaps in terms of audio and video. It could be within the video stream, or it could be across the video and audio streams. And generally, timestamp gaps are bad, because either they have jitter, they have poor experience, or, they have seen to, uh, or they're known to cause AV sync issues in certain, uh, certain playback. So we adjust those, we fix those timestamp gaps. Uh, in our ABR, we try to make sure our iframes are aligned to make uh, so that our ABR upstream and downstream uh, switching ha happens uh, as smooth as possible. Uh, so those are the top two issues we handle in terms of handling bad inputs. There is a, a long tail of others. Um, and in terms of improving quality, we started to, uh, we're starting to look into denoising the input, especially valid for uh, cases where there is low quality inputs to videos that are come up in poor lighting and whatnot. So if you denoise them, the compression efficiency increases and the uh, playback experience generally improves here. Uh, one other key thing is prevent upscaling, where if you have a low resolution video that comes up, we really don't want to upscale it because that destroys quality. Uh, so these are, the, these are the top things we handle in terms of live uh, pre and post processing. Cool. So that's pretty much all about it. This was a lightning talk. Uh, uh, what, would, what I would encourage is to get questions uh, in, in, in the team setting. Uh, I'd, if you can just raise, Facebook folks in the room, if you can just raise hands or stand up uh, so you know where our team is sitting. Uh, please reach out to us, ask us, I'll be, I'll be in the audience to ask us about uh, questions here or anything at what we do at Facebook. Again, thanks for your time today. Thanks.